ओके हाय हाय एवरीवन माइक टेस्टिंग माइक टेस्टिंग हेलो 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 आर यू we should have done this before the video started not after <laughs> the video ended i think so i think so, so. I think so. <laughs> flipping it over yeah, flipping it over hi everyone uh, welcome to another uno tumbler episode um, i am still in bangalore and bringing to you some fam- fabulous stories from uh, you know the startup central of india right uh, today i have with me uh, the one of the founders of uh, special invest uh, mr arjun rao hi arjun thank hey, you Akash, thank, thank you. you thank you and thank you for your time uh, guys the most difficult person to catch hold of is a vc uh, <laughs> especially an early stage vc and especially an early stage vc based out of bangalore <laughs> so no, i'm just kidding i think arjun has been gracious uh you know with uh, with his time and effort uh, you know with me especially right and uh, uh you know uh, once again you know uh, you know he's agreed to spend some time and share some valuable inputs for budding entrepreneurs so uh, you know let's start arjun uh, i think thank uh, you excited yeah yeah and i think uh, if you could just start with a bit of an introduction about yourself and then we go from there sure yeah. thanks sudkarsh really excited to be on uno tumbler and uh, just a quick background you know I'm an engineer by training. Started my career more than 20 years ago. Was fortunate to start my career uh, at Yahoo, Yahoo, one of the darlings of the internet right. industry in the earlier days. Started my career in 2001. Spent uh, close to five years doing product development at internet companies. That sort of gave me a flavor of what a Silicon Valley company is all about. Right. And you know we are you know now in the Silicon Valley of India. Right. So maybe somewhere that start also has influenced my career immensely. Right. Correct. Uh, wanted to move on to the business side and the product side of things uh, within the same industry, and therefore went to business school. Of course, we are classmates. Went to ISB right. in two thousand six. Right. Uh, graduated in two thousand seven. Came back to do product management at an early stage st- startup called Ibibo, which later went on to become Go Ibibo. Right. It's part of the Make My Trip group today. Right. Right. So another unique experience of being in an early stage startup. Right. Right. And building products, launching them, taking them to customers, and seeing that scale. was a unique experience in my uh, early career right and uh, like you mentioned i was in bangalore there was a lot of entrepreneurial activity around me right right and i had built and launched a few products so there was some confidence with that you know i started my first company in 2009 which mm-hmm. was not very successful i built a saas platform for educational institutes okay right but i was hooked on to entrepreneurship okay correct i did not want to go back to working for anybody else mm-hmm. at least it was very clear that you know the risk appetite was there and the you know motivation to build something was there right right and uh, built that uh, company called school hub in 2009 not very successful learned few hard lessons on the ground hmm. particularly about understanding the market sales cycles etc right correct uh, shut it down in about one and a half years but wanted to continue to be entrepreneurial started hmm. my second company in 2010 hmm. a company called travelyari.com hmm. you know we were building erp solution for an unorganized fragmented bus operator market which was intercity bus transport uh and then we were aggregating inventory and selling bus tickets online okay correct and that was sort of a you know the longer entrepreneurial journey of mine right started from scratch raised venture capital ran it for about 6 years along with a couple of co-founders right full the full cycle, cycle journey, so to speak right right so that was a very exciting journey we hmm. built technology built product took it to market we scaled it from 0 to about uh, 200 crores in revenue annual revenues 150 people company across the country wow. right yeah. raised 3 4 rounds of venture capital and this was when what uh, time this was 2010 to 2050 wow okay all right okay. so that yeah. was a 6 year journey and you know roller coaster journey good right. times bad times yeah. we scaled sure. up very quickly mm. right had tough times as well mm-hmm. right and but i would say really that is when i grew up as an entrepreneur and learned <coughs> the right. real nuts and bolts of what it takes to build something right right while i was primarily a technology product guy mm. got other flavors through this journey of you know building a business operations fundraise right right people mm-hmm. most importantly mm-hmm. and that was sort of you know the heart of my 15 year early career right right that led me to then of course work with a lot of entrepreneurs help them through their early stage journey when people were starting companies 
they would come to me through the network and say hey how do i hire my core team what mm-hmm. should i do in terms of product development mm-hmm. so i was helping a lot of startups mm-hmm. right and along the entrepreneurial journey of course uh, reconnected strongly with a dear friend of ours mm-hmm. who's also a classmate from right. isb vishesh, vishesh. Uh, who was in the venture world mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right after isb he had spent uh, close to a decade right. at a larger venture capital firm called Venture East. Right, right. right. Hi, hi Vishesh. <laughs> yeah, I'm good to see you here. Right, so we, he came back in and we were always in touch uh, and particularly when I needed advice in my right. startup, right. I went to him because he was only friendly VC I knew. Right. So he's a friend, he'll give me good advice right. and he'll let me help me out during the tough times and right. he did. Right. Correct. So we sort of connected deeper right. during that time frame. Mm. And he had, while he was doing his day job, investing in startups at the fund, Correct. He had also started doing some angel investing on the okay. side. Okay. Correct. Mm. Uh, and that was very fascinating to me. I've, mm. I've never been an investor. So he would also tell me, hey, I've invested in this company. Hey, this mm. is interesting. And I also was getting some inbound from friends and networks to say, hey, I'm looking for early stage capital. Uh-huh. How do I do that? Then I would connect them to Vishesh. Vishesh. Uh-huh. Say, hey, is the investor. You should talk uh-huh. to them. Uh-huh. Talk to them. And along the way, we would we would discuss these ideas, he would invest in some, then I would say, hey, okay, I can help the founders in some operating right. guidance. Uh-huh. And then I'd say, okay, maybe it's good to not only give gyan and uh-huh. advice, uh-huh. maybe it's also good to put in some little money. Right. right? Okay. We didn't have too much money, but whatever little, it's always good to have skin in the game. Right. right. Correct? That is the entrepreneurial instinct right. also to be more involved right. Right. with right. the founders that we were trying to help. Right. And that sort of happened, Vishesh mainly, and then I, between us, we started investing a little bit. We invested in close to 10 companies. Okay. And, and this over was a like of time. your own personal investment Correct. and you kind right. of clubbed it all together. Yeah. So there was a little bit of personal investment, right. but we were also sort of pooling in capital through close networks that okay. we had access to. Got it. Right. Got it. That had little more capital. So you so got all of them together and they invested directly. But they you invested were, directly. So there was no vehicle or any Nothing. fund or anything. Nothing. Got Those it. days there were no syndicates. Right. If right, you right, think right, about right, it. Right, this right, is 2012, 13, 14, 15, got 16. It, got it. Correct. So there was no you know, let's venture, there was no right. angel list. And so this was speak. in parallel to your travel yari. Uh, the job. last couple of years last of my of entrepreneurial right. yeah. So on weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays, I would meet founders, Got right, it. Yeah. Uh, and help them out and give them advice and right. see if I could help them raise capital. Right. Vishesh had that expertise of helping them raise capital. Right. And right. there was a pool of uh, people, people of that were together. coming yeah. along with us and trusting our judgment. Right. Right. right and these were mm. small pools of capital right correct mm. uh, so sort of a syndicate but it was direct investing right. all the work was done uh, by us so that was mm. sort of the angel portfolio that we built right and then as i moved out of my last venture mm. travel yari and then vishesh had spent close to 10 years at venture east mm. and then we had built out this portfolio right. we also got lucky from a timing perspective some of these companies got exited exited okay. correct they existed mm. to larger mm. mnas larger companies buying them out because mm. the time was right so there was some return on capital right right right, right? so there you was some saw, exits, saw some exits right so we saw this life cycle in some right. sense investing working with them and then seeing exits as well right and that was a unique experience also particularly for me and then to say hey what is this we have seen the full life cycle and mm. then in 2016 we start seriously started thinking can this be done for me mm. Mm. Vijay is coming from the investing background, mm. having done that for a decade, mm. understanding what it takes to run a fund as well. Mm. Correct. Mm-hmm. Me coming from the operating background. Right. Both of us having a shared passion of the zero to one journey of right. a startup. Right. 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 Similar right. to yourself. Right. 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 And right. that was very common to both of us. We were very excited about providing capital, but also working closely with entrepreneurs mm. in the earliest day, mm. when almost there was nothing else. <coughs> right? Right, right, so right. that chaotic time of the early stage was not a problem for us. Correct, we had seen it ourselves correct, in correct. different capacities. Right. We and and as, a, as I keep saying, I think my thesis is that's where entrepreneurs need the most help. Correct. You know, so correct. Absolutely. So we've been through our own journey as well. Right. I've been through that a couple of times. Right. I had failed uh-huh. and I had gone through tough times in my journey. Right. So I said, hey, yes, we can probably provide the right side of guidance. Yeah. And of course, capital going along with this is a perfect formula. Right. Right. And that was sort of the discussion in 2016 hmm. to say, hey, as a team, we go back a long way. Right. We're classmates from school. We have deep trust, appreciation in myself. Right. We have, you know, you know, 
complementary skill sets in terms of finance background investing right. background and, and operating, operating background right. right shared passion of early stage investing right. and early stage company building right. and supporting right. startups mm-hmm. so that was very common <clears throat> and then a layer on top was saying what sort of companies mm-hmm. made sense for mm-hmm. so that was the additional discussion that happened over a period of time right and having luckily done a few angel investments seen a few exits so we got one or two exits in 15 and 16 hmm. maybe three exits by right, the time right. it was 2016 right, right? so right. that was some learning saying hey that's not a bad track record ha, ha, right ha. which also gives us confidence, confidence yeah. to do this in a formal setup right, right? right, right. but most important <clears throat> important for us was the shared vision hmm. the shared passion of the early stage hmm. and the view that we have immense trust amongst each other and therefore we can build something for the long haul and when With did that we started when did start. you guys formally uh, kick it off so technically you know the fund was set up in 2017 mm. right we started doing work end of 2016 okay. right we were aligned we had right. the discussion that this right. is what we're going to do we'll start small mm. we we'll go out to investors there were some investors that had already invested along with us through our angel portfolio mm. so we said hey that's the first set of people we can go <coughs> we can reach out to we can reach out to and tell them a more structured story of what a fund will do right what will be the fund thesis what will right. be the fund th- strategy right. so Technically, we got off the ground in 2017, but we started laying the groundwork in 2016. End, got it. Right. Got Vishesh it. moved out of venture in <coughs> late 2016. Okay. I moved out of my startup early 2016. Okay. okay. Right. So got one year of figuring out figuring whether out. this made sense. Right. right. Figuring out what whether we were aligned to do something for the long haul. Right. 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 We also we're not young anymore. We're not uh, 25 year olds. So right. we had this thing that okay, whatever we build. it has to be well thought through and right. it has to be for the long haul then right. it will take time so right. you do it patiently right. so 16 was sort of that transition phase uh, and uh, discussions uh. and clarifying a bunch of things got it and then 17 was when the fund set up we got our license etc and now from 2016 17 to where you guys are right now so where are if you could just share sure. how big you are right now and no, what's think, your portfolio uh, and i think by the way guys this This is one of one of the unique sort of you know setups which actually looks at deep tech. They have made uh, quite a few space tech investments. I I saw yes. one very recently, just I think a yes. couple of days ago. Two days ago, we announced it. Back, right? Yes, and I think uh, they're they're the ones who are kind of you know backing a lot of these space tech guys. You know, so uh, how <laughs> 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 what happened there? You know, so yeah, I, you know, I think <laughs> there is a bunch of serendipity and a lot of stories behind it. Right. We'll get to that. I think we've come a long way since we started. We right. generally did not know, mm. you know, uh, how it will shape up. But we were very, very fortunate mm. to be in this position where we are today. We mm. started our first fund, like I said, in 2017. Mm. That fund was a less than 10 million dollar fund, a okay. 60 crore fund. Right. Sort of proof of concept. Right. We were very thankful to our early investors, LPs, to have backed us, to given us that call. capital hmm. with that fund we invested in 18 companies okay correct okay uh and again we are in the 6th year of that first fund okay which okay. we are still active okay we have completely deployed it we are so we have four or five exits right. we have 13 companies that are still active wow. that we are invested in wow. we are supporting in wow. supporting by you know uh, by good luck and Uh, you know how the companies have performed mm. so far there haven't been any fatalities very nice there have been excellent right mm-hmm. of course there are some companies right, that are struggling right, right. but that is part right. for course but part but we have yeah. not had any companies that have shut down and we have you know so that is a unique place to be mm. with all of this momentum last year we launched our second fund okay we did a final close we started in 2021 but we did a final close last year okay and that is a 300 crore fund wow right so you can say yes, 5x yeah. in price from crore. the first fund we're very very wow. fortunate wow again something that we had in plan And for we thought right. we will take a step up, but it's uh-huh. become you know a more responsibility Absolutely. as we can imagine. Absolutely. The second fund is a 300 crore fund. Wow. Continuing doing super early stage investing. Wow. Correct. Amazing. Seed stage, pre-seed stage is what we do. Right. Write checks of half a million to 750k. Okay. Very early, almost always pre-revenue. Okay. In a lot of cases, even pre-product. Pre-product. Oh. Which wow. means there's a team, there's a concept, maybe there's an MVP that's good enough for us. Okay. We've done. 
investments even when there's just a ppt wow okay. right so super early stage mm. and the second key pillar which you were referring to <laughs> at least talking about one of the examples which is space tech etc is that we are deep tech focused deep tech focused from the beginning that was something that we proactively looked at saying mm. that was the gap in the indian startup ecosystem mm. correct and if you look at the evolution of our ecosystem over the last <coughs> 20 plus years right right and if you look at 30 40 years also it's mm-hmm. it services it services right yeah. which we were great at we yeah. built phenomenally large businesses in it services right right what did we do next we built product dev companies that were offshore dev centers uh, for uh, global product companies yes right i worked at one you right, 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 one absolutely yahoo yeah. Mm. you know google of the world have dev centers here yeah. you know apple has now yeah, yeah. correct facebook <coughs> everybody right so we built products for you yeah. know in dev centers offshore dev centers here that's right. next step then we started building our own product companies mm. right we've seen lot of successes there as well mm. flipkart ola right, you right, know paytm right, and many right. many more today yeah, absolutely correct so that's phase 3 where we are building our own product companies for our own audience mm. but mm. those were tech enabled companies mm. as opposed to being deep tech deep it tech. driven mm. right and my simplest definition is to say on day 1 Google was a deep tech company mm. because it was a search engine which had a core algorithm which was a core IP right it right. came from a IP which came from right well amazon on day 1 was right. an essentially a deep tech it exactly. was a site selling bus, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. selling you know books yeah 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 it's a crude way of saying what is deep tech yes. what is tech enabled uh-huh, uh-huh, right uh-huh. but we believe that when we started the fund and therefore continue to believe that the next 10 years 15 years 20 years right. we should definitely be able to build those sorts of companies hmm. which is built on core ip really right. hard to build technology right both software and hardware got it with all the history of the talent and right. skills right. that, that have. we have that we have learned over many years the talent pool is available in our country right right, right? ideas are coming in we right. can solve both domestic problems as well as, well as global problems global from here mm. you've seen the last 5 <coughs> plus years also the strong saas right right ecosystem yeah, growth yes i think that has right? kind of taken off yeah and yeah. see mm. we can build global products from here mm. with that genesis the second pillar for us is we are early stage but we are also going to focus on deep technology right right right, right. and with that again we've looked at a gamut of ideas mm. 50% software 50% hardware got it right? oh, wow, okay. in the hardware segment something that you are referring to yeah. we were fortunate to take early bets and early you know investments make early investments in space technology companies four plus years ago from our first fund mm. right again if you look at it it's not very alien to us mm. isro is a very strong brand Absolutely. globally yeah, correct yeah. forever isro has been doing amazing yeah, space yeah. technology yeah yeah right yeah. it's just been backed by the government yes and we also <laughs> is always been launching rockets forever satellites right. forever right very frugally as well. and then successfully very yeah. successfully yeah. Mm-hmm. for great track record mm-hmm. we only haven't prioritized it mm. right which sort of the same thing that happened in the west nasa right. was doing everything but 10 years plus ago right you know elon musk yes. built spacex these those and correct? all these guys these those yeah. you know the virgin guys yeah. everybody yeah. correct so our thinking was that has to happen in india as well mm. we were fortunate to meet a few founders mm. mm-hmm. who were pioneers in the space who were saying we are building space tech companies mm. either rocket launch vehicles uh. or satellites for various uh. use cases or various other ecosystem players mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. correct mm-hmm. and with that view we evaluated some of these and we were early <coughs> investors in a company called agniku okay yes which is yes. a 100% 3d printed yeah. small rocket right. launch vehicle guys you must go and check out that it, it what a what an innovative company yeah. yes. phenomenal Amazing. phenomenal company out of right. uh, being currently built out of it madras right. two founders from chennai right. right one of the founders actually worked at wall street oh, wow. but he was always passionate about you know space tech space and, tech. and wow. then he did a masters in aerospace management and then worked in LA to learn about the space ecosystem Amazing, and huh? then he came back to India to start this company so right. it's a great journey there right, great right, right. so again long story short we were you know fortunate to make some early investments there and huh. after making the first investments we learn a lot more hmm. okay hmm. first investment is always the hardest right right right, right? right. and then you learn from the founders right, because right. they are the experts absolutely, in the domain absolutely, absolutely right and we were able to learn a lot of that huh. and we made three or four more investments right. and now we have made totally five investments in space wow wow right no amazing, variety huh? of things in space no, it's, uh, yeah it's amazing it's and out. also i think what would be happening was uh, would be now that you've already made these investments news is public then other people who are starting up would look up and say Correct. hey this is one of the funds which is kind of i think that's a benefit we got by doing right. the first deal yeah. right that 
whenever somebody else was doing something in that ecosystem right. or even other cutting edge stuff huh. they said hey okay, maybe this fund specially yeah. knows something uh-huh. or at least they are willing to do this while other right. people are not or right. less people are doing it right right correct yeah. maybe when we started there were four or five funds yeah. doing deep tech right. now i think the ecosystem is mature right. yes, yes 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 right maybe there are 10 15 funds but Good. still it's a small sliver right. compared to the mainstream which like, is like like saas or bcs and all right fintech etc right right, right right so you're right it helped us in deal flow right right, right. right. entrepreneurs right. coming to us and sharing their ideas very right. early right. right and brainstorming with us yeah, in yeah. some sense teaching us a lot right right and that led us to doing deal number 2 3 4 5 so now we have done five wow amazing. we just announced our uh, fifth one fifth which one. is our first one from the second fund wow which okay. is a company called inspicity uh-huh, uh-huh. which is with the <coughs> really audacious goal of building you know cities in space someday right it sounds like science fiction but it nice. starts with startup startup stars. startup <laughs> startup scene in bangalore is going towards towards science fiction now you know so, yeah, so, so i can be learned by speaking to entrepreneurs insane it's it's crazy so very exciting yeah, yeah, right yeah. of course it's about building the of building course, blocks of course. first right. and then it is even possible right. right it sounds like science fiction but right. it is actually a lot of people in space tech are talking about some of these things yeah, again we yeah. early maybe we have some exposure to the space right. and enabled us to envision this right. again find an entrepreneur yeah. right and this is a professor from my <coughs> department wow right wow. Uh, who has been teaching aerospace plus in the propulsion for the last 10 years and we've spent time with him yeah. and i think from this. what i have read about this sector i think this is this is the next thing that even i i heard uh, elon musk also talking about right yes. saying yes. that eventually we need to be on mars correct right? we we did the moon, there, moon there's, there's mars, something happening on around the moon course, as well yeah. yeah so a lot of stuff happening there of hmm. course the west takes a lead but there is no reason we cannot build any of this yeah right absolutely we've got and the we technology it, we've got the chops right? and we will build it frugally yes we will not need billions of dollars yes. to build it yes yes right? yes as yes. an example agni cool which yeah. is about to launch hmm. any time hopefully soon uh-huh. right uh-huh. and geared up for a uh, their first launch hmm. correct has built everything over the last 5 years not even having spent 20 million dollars wow while counterparts in the west europe america etc right. will take hundreds of millions of dollars to build what they built wow so hmm. having that real dna of hmm. building cutting edge innovation hmm. at not a extreme high cost hmm. is also a benefit yes right? yes absolutely. and now isro is supporting this activity of privatization Got with the, of course government pushing through right. because they realize that you need to get privatization in because cutting edge innovation can move faster right and the right. government and our local ecosystem also needs that hmm. Okay. Hmm. so space is one but broadly the deep tech ecosystem which hmm. includes evs hmm. batteries energy yeah. you guys were also i think one of the early backers for ultraviolet right correct so correct. they just ultraviolet guys if you if you've uh, you know not not seen it's a electric bike correct. maker right and high performance bikes Uh, I think the first one, uh, you know, went uh, uh, was was handed over first keys of the first one. I think was handed over to Dulkar Salman, right? Yes. And uh, we were just discussing this before the yes. interview, and some drool worthy, drool worthy bikes, yeah, no doubt. Phenomenal vehicle. Yeah. Again, we were fortunate to be early investors. Right. Right. Even before we started the fund in one of our angel portfolio, it was in our angel okay. portfolio. Okay. Okay. So okay. that's a journey that's been six years plus. Wow. Right. So we've wow. seen the evolution of how, how hard it is. It's not right. easy to build a full vehicle. Ah, absolutely. Ground up. yeah cutting edge design right. cutting edge performance right battery right. technology yeah right. cooling technology everything everything built in house amazing right and they've come a long way so the bikes are on the roads ah uh, bikes are on the roads yeah in the hands yeah. of customers yes. it's coming great feedback yes and uh. they're now moving to the next level of scaling up right right right, right, right. and that is very exciting they've been invested by you know larger investors right. qualcomm has invested wow. tvs motors has invested very recently the xor group has invested which is the family office of ferrari Oh wow right okay. which is a great validation for them right right in terms of something coming out made in india right can right. be done for the world right. which is great engineering and great yeah. design ah. that's very heartening to ah. see ah, right. that's another flavor of deep tech in the automotive side on the ev side which is a very strong wave as we are seeing wow amazing right. how how does it uh, you know just to round this discussion out right so how does it feel to you know one see success like this i mean you 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 guys took a bet on an idea right and again this is more from the point of view of you know our young entrepreneurs who will be seeing this you've taken a bet on the idea and then you've kind of you know obviously you'll see of some failures as well 
uh, something obviously nothing goes as per plan <laughs> never, so, never 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 straight nothing plan. nothing goes as per plan right so yeah. uh, how does it feel to kind of you know just uh, you know how do i call it uh, uh, see success like that right must be feeling great right no i think definitely i think i would say the whole thing feeling is being grateful uh-huh. and being fortunate right that you know we were able to do that and we have seen that journey right and uh, you know so happy mainly for the founders who grind it out right right through really thick and thin right right, right. it's right. never easy right when they started i remember it was just a concept ha uh, correct right? it was two people an idea sure. and a concept piece of paper and, and this is how we yeah tens and hundreds of bikes now uh-huh. live right. and on the roads and right. in the hands of customers and people coming and paying money for it and really being so happy to yeah. own one right is just great yeah. right i think uh, i would say you know very very grateful for the learning of the journey right because you realize how hard it is mm. you realize you know the mistakes that were made mm. you realize what worked for you right. and hopefully you can take that and most importantly then you take energy from that yeah. saying okay there is light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> through a hard journey right so let's do more right because the results are so good right right, right? that motivates us to do more take right. more risks right. take more audacious bets right. work with other entrepreneurs who are looking who are at trying it. to so never you know you know worry about you know how hard it is hmm. yes it is hard it, it is, is hard. good that's uh, the journey that's, that's the, the journey, journey. we all picked yes yes right? yes no doubt so no. don't worry about it but when you see the success hmm. right you're very happy for the founders and right. the team core team particularly right. the early team right. that took the risk correct and correct. stick stuck through tough times right and then you say okay from from an investor perspective hmm. of course the returns are there hmm. but more importantly it gives us the fuel right. to say let's invest in more such in more such uh, ideas and more right? such and yeah. that's exciting for us going right. forward super yeah super what a fab journey here. i think you know it's been it's 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 been wonderful to see you know and i we've obviously known each other so i think it's been just wonderful to see the evolution you know how you guys kind of started off in a nice cozy fashion right and and wonderful set of people right and then uh, and then to kind of you know realize that you know the scale at which you guys are now operating i think it's yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing no, right? thank you so much i yeah. think the whole ecosystem and everybody is very very kind to us right that and the portfolio particularly we now have 30 companies across fund 1 and fund 2 wow amazing right, where we started right. and of course while you know the you know the fund size is nice and all right. it is more responsible yeah, yeah, because yeah. we give returns to our lps right right, right 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 but very incredibly fortunate to be in this position and for me particularly right i'm not an investor yeah. by training uh, uh, right uh, 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 serendipitous investor right, it's not right. <laughs> but to be in this position to continuously learn from new entrepreneurs to right. work with them closely on a daily basis right you know i'm you know just a it's privilege to do this super, work right super That's super fair. okay great so um, i have a you know set of questions that yeah. you know i i shared with you and uh, what we'll do in 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 this part of the conversation is i want to bring in uh, an early stage investor insights right i mean so I, I, i these questions are more from the point of view of a of somebody who's looking to raise money who's looking sure. to basically understand uh you know the entire fundraising uh, you know process and all right so sure. so i'll just shoot through those uh, feel free to add on you know wherever you feel uh, you know you you want to bring in something sure. more, right so so typically you know how how do funds operate right and you know and i'm sure you know there are certain tweaks when you're talking early stage later stage and all of that but just from an understanding perspective if you were to explain to i am an entrepreneur and you were to explain to me how does how do funds work sure sure no, i'll try and put it in a simpler frame framework mm. right obviously we pool in capital from right. our investors who are lps mm-hmm, mm-hmm. correct uh, like i said uh, we could take the example of our second fund which mm-hmm. is a 300 crore fund mm-hmm. right the goal is to build a portfolio mm-hmm. correct mm-hmm. and again portfolio construct is a key part of setting up a fund and yeah. thinking through a fund yeah. so there are different types of funds you could you would decide how many companies you want to invest yeah. and at what stage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right and the typical there can be some math around that mm. which is to say we will invest in 20 companies mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and then we'll say hey our typical check size which like i said we are pre seed seed mm-hmm. can be half a million dollars to 750k that is 4 to 6 crores mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. if you take an average of 5 crores and 20 companies mm. that's, that's 100, 100 crores, crores right correct so that's phase 1 to say there's 100 crores now what we have 300 crores uh, uh, because uh, there are some fees and all of that uh, which helps us run the right. operations of the fund right. have a team so a small percentage of of 
whatever is raised kind of goes to the team to manage their expenses correct and, so yeah. the management fees helps yes. us run the run operations of the operations. fund yeah. on an everyday basis mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right and the rest of the capital is to be deployed like mm-hmm. i said then you make 20 companies mm-hmm. and it is 5 crores that's 100 crores all mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. right then you have another 250 to 200 crores mm-hmm. then that is typically reserve capital reserve capital right, right. so the goal is always you build a portfolio of companies mm. and as the companies mature mm. and go through their phases of evolution and growth mm. right in their future rounds of capital can you put more dollars some more money yeah. right because at the yeah. earlier stage when you are taking the bet the risk is the highest this is the highest yes. right huh. reward is also the highest yes. so you get yes. uh, paid for that but in the next round let's say they get a pre series a mm. or a series a or series b mm. right then the in the best companies mm. as the risk reduces right. you actually want to put more money exactly. in the risk reduced improved companies got it correct got it. so mm. the goal is to double down on the winners got it in yeah. the portfolio and that's where the balance 200 crores right comes. right right, right? That, that so comes in first start building a 20 company portfolio uh-huh. and as they evolve let's say 15 of them become very good okay. then 10 of them go even further and five right. of them are the best and right. and typically what is the cycle of a fund so essentially you, you know okay. so mm-hmm. our fund cycle typically is 8 years 8 years right okay. which means we deploy over the first half of the fund to okay. four years Got we it. build the 20 company portfolio got it and then of course we continue to support them and work with them and got it. as they mature and evolve got then it. the exits happen got it right there is an option to extend this fund mm-hmm. fund mm-hmm. life by another couple of years right so 8 right. to 10 years is a typical fund life cycle got it right? got it which is also promised to lps and our investors so and, that you have enough time for them to evolve and this information about uh, i mean not the specifics but like you know the details but general information that you are raising a fund and this is available online right i mean typically you know in, as part of your pr or any exercise you will say right that we yeah, have just typically announced like you, like you've just announced for yes. your senior core fund right yes. so guys whenever a, a fund is raised right so the team kind of announces so when you're doing your research i think it's very important yes right it's very important for you to realize that if you're reaching out to a fund are they in the investing phase right typically funds are usually in the investing phase but if they've just raised around they're more likely to be kind of you know really actively and aggressively scouting for ideas that's right? an important aspect right like i said the mm. deployment phase and the investing phase is about 3 to 4 years right right but the first 2 years is that much more exactly you know, you're exactly. that much more available right. maybe in the third year you're almost at the fag end exactly. fourth year If yeah. you wrap it up. You've got enough great companies in the exactly. years. You may not right. have, and then you're already thinking about the next fund. So exactly. So knowing yeah. where funds are in their life cycle, because we could also tweak. Right. Sometimes, right. You know, our deployment strategy right. Right. year one versus year three, year four. Exactly. Because there is, you know, in year four, yeah. right. From a fund life cycle, we have six years left. Right. Right. Correct. Right. Or right. or five years left. Right. Right. As opposed to year one, we have the full eight years. Really? Left. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. So there's a different mindset. Sometimes. Exactly. So it's exactly. good for the entrepreneurs to know where you are, where right. a fund is, where a fund is, right. when have they raised, what is their, where, where what and stage what are, are they, check in, typical check sizes, right? I think typically, obviously, the sectors, right? So I mean, I'm not saying that you know, uh, you know, anybody will say no, but obviously, if these guys are. So let's say focused on deep tech you go to their website yeah. you see that they're focused on deep tech right somebody else comes in which is kind of you know something ancillary to what they do they look at that idea but maybe they'll say ki acha theek hai this is yeah. a little bit outside of our kind of you know focus no, area and all that fairly clear i mean honestly usually there'll be two types of funds huh. the more horizontal generic funds who right. do everything hmm. right or do all sorts of uh, right. sectors hmm. and we are that much more focused Right, deep tech and early stage. <coughs> right, but yes, if you come with a consumer right company right. which is not deep tech or a D to C company, right, then that is not a fit for not us. not a fit right? for us. Right, so it is yeah. not time well spent from the entrepreneur's perspective yeah, right. huh. to reach out to exactly. a fund like us. Exactly, it's so better to find a good D to C focused fund exactly. or a horizontal fund. Exactly, right? so exactly. So with that in mind, absolutely yeah. doing that early research. Yeah, and therefore doing the outreach. Right, right, right? right. with that filter in makes mind, a lot of sense. Is is uh, optimization of time. Yeah. Cool. So uh, the other question I have is that when and and why should a you know entrepreneur raise money, right? I think uh, you know I think because of all the news that kind of you know goes around and all, right? Typically, थोड़ा FOMO हो जाता है सब. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody is raising money. Correct. If I am not raising money, am I doing something wrong, right? Okay. But I think there is a very specific answer to it, right? So I think we'll we'll hear your views. So. Uh, when and why should an entrepreneur raise money? No, it's a very very relevant question. Yeah. Right? I would think that 95% of the businesses in the world don't need venture capital. <laughs> right? 
right? And we can see that in our <laughs> ecosystem, right? In our right. country, right? Right. There's just so much entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Local Kirana shop doesn't need venture capital. Absolutely. Absolutely. A basic retail business doesn't need. Right? right. So many amazing, not only small businesses, medium businesses, yeah, large yeah, businesses yeah, 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 yeah. have been built without venture capital. Yes. Over yes. the last fifty years and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. I think venture capital is a very specialized pool of capital mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for in my opinion what is has should have two fundamental types of what a company can become mm-hmm. one is the innovation quotient is very high mm-hmm. correct mm-hmm. and by that it means for early innovation and product building mm-hmm. You need, you need disproportionate capital right. when business is still not going to start, when revenue is not going to start. Right, right. Correct. Right. Right. Pre-commercialization, building something complex. It could right. be building a complex AI product. Right. It could be building an ultraviolet motorbike. Right. right. It could be building a rocket, like a you know, yeah, and yeah. many, many other right. things. Right. 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 It takes time, resources, and money to build up the product hmm. itself. Hmm. Hmm. Right. And you don't have any income coming. In. Yeah. Therefore, you need somebody to give you that capital right. and bet on that. Right. Correct. So that is one right. key reason why you need venture. Hmm. Hmm. The second aspect is the possible growth rate hmm. of a company. Hmm. Right. Once the product is launched hmm. in the market, hmm. correct. What is the growth of a company? Hmm. Venture capital is typically not for markets, industries, and sectors hmm. where there is a steady five, ten percent year on year growth. Hmm. The opportunity to have disproportionately fast growth mm, mm. because of great technology, great technology or a great business model of some combination of right, that right, 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 is where venture capital is most Got valuable. It. Got so it. I would say great, you know, complex product building huh. needs unique early capital right. or really fast growth right. in terms of let's look at you know, Scale companies like, like Flipkart, yeah, yeah, companies absolutely. like. Uh, Uber, Zomato. Ola, Zomato, Swiggy. Yeah. So then, venture capital can really help you. It's like a rocket, rocket, market. rocket fuel, right? So you kind of you know can go grab a large market, right, or right. create a really new market right. very quickly, right. and become a market leader, and right. therefore build a very meaningful large company. Right. 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 So I would say these two things, hmm. if you can think about your business hmm. or your idea hmm. with these two lenses and hmm. say, does this fit this model? Hmm. Hmm. Then you go to venture capital. Got it. Then, therefore, I believe only five percent or lesser need right. venture capital. Right. And 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 just flipping the question a little bit, when should an entrepreneur not raise money? Yeah. Is it is it okay if I just add on to that sure. question as well? So is it okay if uh, as a as a founder and you know this typically kind of goes around? I've I've quit my job. I've taken a risk. I'm uh, you know uh, head charting into unknown waters, but I don't have the money to. Hire people or to or to pay myself something, right? At least to kind of you know keep the fires burning and all. Yeah. Is it okay to raise money for that particular reason alone, or does that kind of need to be wrapped in in the other two elements that you just spoke about? When should I not raise money? Yeah, I think uh, that's a fair question. The other two aspects should still be at the heart right. of it. Right. Right. Uh, there are also various other forms of hmm. capital. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. Which could be debt, mm-hmm. which could be some quasi form of uh, capital, mm-hmm. right? Uh, with equity ownership, mm-hmm. but it does not have require the high growth rate high or growth the high rate. innovation yeah. level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think VCs like us and others mm-hmm. are okay when you want to build a small team mm-hmm. to build out a product mm-hmm. and for founder self sustain. Mm-hmm. As long as that quantum is not disproportionate. Yeah. I mean, don't pay yourself like ten lakhs per month. Correct with VC money, especially at the early stages, guys. Absolutely. Right. Right. Important thing for the VCs is to see the skin in the game for right. the founders. Right. Right. Of course, everybody is in a different phase of life. Right. Right. Yeah. Take something for sustenance is not a problem. Right. But don't let it be a big portion of their capital risk. Uh-huh. Right. Don't let it be for inventory, for example. Hmm. If you are, have a product and you want to procure inventory. Hmm. Working capital is Isn't not better. best yeah, 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 raised yeah, via yeah, equity. Absolutely. Correct? absolutely. Think of other forms of capital. Right, right, Correct? right. So think about what you need the money for. Right. Is right. it for IP building, product building? Right. Take then, the money. Yes. Is it for fast market customer acquisition? Right. Fair enough. Right. Anything else if you want for inventory, if right. you want for working capital, if you want to just 
and ads support right. teams and right. stuff, then figure it out is that the correct right there's this debt there is there is you know uh, overdrafts you'll get from your bank and, and so on and so forth yeah. yeah so i would say keep this ring fenced view mm-hmm. of you know what you are build using the capital towards right and use it to things that are going to disproportionately add value right a new product develop disproportionately adds value right right new customer acquisition Right. great lifetime value great lifetime value right. is great right right we all know we yeah. talk about ltv big great yes, 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 yes 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 right and if that is there for customer acquisition it is worth it. Right. right anything outside of that be cautious whether it is going into right is if, if equity and venture equity is right. the best way to is the best way to work yeah that's a fabulous fabulous great great point uh, how uh, you know the, the next question i have is now as as an entrepreneur you know there are lots of uh, you know funds that are available in the market right uh, and obviously kind of you know you guys will be having tremendous amount of uh, inflow in terms yes. of you know the <laughs> because obviously yeah. you're that's the model right that's guys i mean that's the job right so the email ids are out there on the website there is you know there is a you know a submit button and all that right yeah. but uh, having been on the other side yeah jawab nahi aata hai <laughs> you know so most of the times right so how do i how do i as an entrepreneur break the clutter how do i kind of you know make myself heard right i mean there is there is so much going around right right so how right. No, what are your inputs challenge in this yeah. ecosystem yeah right uh, and it's a i would look at it as a positive way that so many entrepreneurs are yes there. absolutely yeah absolutely. and so many funds are there. right 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 and that's a positive sign for all of us right right now of course cold emailing hmm. writing on the website submitting pitches hmm. on fund websites hmm. is a must to must to right yeah i'm observing more and more the ecosystem in being more open right because from an investor's perspective the fear of missing out on a great deal hmm hmm correct is very high. is quite high very high right yeah, because yeah. we have to get into the best deals wherever possible right, right. so at least from our perspective at special we right. have to not miss any email right right, right? right, right. and we try to as respond a team, 6 yeah. april respond to every single pitch even right. if it's a quick one liner saying this right. is not a fit for us and guys one important point these are usually small teams Yes. yes how big are you i mean like yeah uh, eight member team so there you go so 300 crore fund 13 investments <laughs> eight member team including both uh, both including the partners, two partners yes. including <laughs> the two partners right so, yes so yeah so fair point so i think yeah, and a couple of people running operations or right. not in investing right. so actually the investors is a very small team yes yes right? yes so there you know bandwidth is a right. it's a constraint we see literally anywhere between 1500 to 2000 deals a year Woof. right okay. so there is enough your yeah. right deal flow right. positively but there is you know there's also bandwidth constraint right. Right. So, but don't miss out putting it on the website mm. i see more and more funds including us right we don't want to miss anything mm. we will it take it might take longer for a mm. response mm. correct mm. but be patient on that do that mm-hmm. second is of course it is it mm. is there are better odds of return mm. if somebody sends us an email referring an author Ah, uh, right. Okay. Somebody we know. Somebody. Right. Uh, of course, I know you. If you sent me an email, right, right. Saying, hey, look at this entrepreneur I met him. Right, right. Correct. Right. He's a great guy. He's building mm. something. Maybe you should take a look. Right. I'm going to pay it. Right. Right. It's coming from a trusted source. Right. There's a filter. Utkarsh, right. you know what right. I like. Right. What right. Shalik does. Right. Right. So there's already a certain level. I know it is not coming out randomly on the right. Right. And because of that, right. there is a you know. i am going to respond i'm going to spend time i'm going to pay some attention right so right. as entrepreneurs find that in hmm. find out who we know hmm. we are accessible on linkedin hmm. write a note through hmm. somebody right. try to get an introduction hmm. through the ecosystem hmm. there are so many enablers there hmm. are so many connections the ecosystem while has become 5x 10x of what right. it used to be it's still but it's more good and and also it's become a lot more open now it is very open it people are open. responding on linkedin people yeah. are responding then like i said email ids are available online right you can reach out Correct. to people right Correct. so, so I, think, i think use social media extensively yeah i'm yeah. very active on twitter for example right right, right? linkedin all our team is active so right. seek us out do a little research say hey arjun went to isb arjun right. went to the school maybe he would know what kar right. so right. we do it right. somebody else on our team went to a different college do you know it? are you from that college right. do you know somebody from somebody that from that college like find circles of common overlap right 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 try to get a warm introduction as much right. as possible and right. i think there are better odds of there are better odds response. of some response the other thing i would say is then events hmm. correct hmm. demo days hmm. pitch days hmm. 
incubators accelerators yeah, all yeah. of these places pitch sessions and there are many today yeah yeah particularly accelerated with covid and ah, you know remote work right? there are virtual demo virtual demo days don't have to physically go there yes, yes. right i can click a zoom button and right. i'm listening to demo demos right. from gurgaon from yes, 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 yes 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 from bombay from chennai yeah, everywhere yeah, correct yeah, and yeah. i'll spend one hour i'll see 20 companies hmm, hmm. that's a good thing yeah. so yeah we are scouting there everybody hmm. scouting there hmm. correct so it's a good thing to be present in those places right Okay of course that could be a stack rank of you know which are the best demo days and which are the best pitch sessions right right places right. and accordingly you should do that mm. okay mm. what i am not a very strong proponent of uh, yeah. is you know and the particularly in the early stage mm. is to outsource the job of reaching out to vcs through bankers ah okay okay investor bankers now they there's a stage at which you know they become they add value. value yeah they add value which yeah. i think is after certain maturity c right. a b right. or later right. not necessarily i want to hear from founders right i want that the founders reach out to us so the early seed pre series a kind of Correct. stages it story has to come from story the founder, has to come from the founder, right the reach yeah. out has to come it's also something that we are checking we are checking if the founder has his hustle uh, has he been able to reach us uh, or uh, anybody else uh, 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 which without a direct connect is right. found a way to say do the research right. find specially or right with the relevant fund right, right and figure out a way to reach us to reach and us. come and tell us that story right, right. the critical part of that early discussion right is right. listening to the founder story yes yes right? yes so yes. i want to hear it from the founders mouth right 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 right, 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 right. and reaching out process is also important how to right. i by the way i have been reached out by very interestingly hmm. correct one of our very early investments in our first fund okay correct was an online gaming company okay a real money gaming company where uh-huh. their first game was poker okay okay right and the way they the founders reached out uh-huh. was they f- filtered all investors in this country hmm. correct hmm. found out their social media handles hmm. and saw if there was any reference to any poker any poker and Ma- i incidentally I, do, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know that <laughs> i i i love the game and uh, i play the game uh, right incidentally on my poker profile uh, or sorry on my twitter profile uh, was my one of my interests sports uh, something else and poker poker uh, and they wrote to me saying that uh, hey you know, uh, and it caught my attention immediately immediately yeah, yeah. so the call i uh, did not know the founders uh, 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 but they this is the background work they did right and we invested in them uh, uh, and they grew they scaled it was yeah. good yeah. exit it was yeah. successful outcome uh, for everybody uh, 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 just an example right of right. a cold outreach but yeah. contextual cold right, outreach right right so that's the work they did super and when super. i went to found this for they said they said okay this is what we were building right. so we want to see who resonates with this right. idea right right and i was we were one of the people right super example. super great great super that that's such a great example uh in terms of you know now let's say somebody has reached out to you and you kind of you know it's past your filters and you've kind of like the idea what happens i mean in terms of what would you kind of you know call out say two three four important things which lead to a successful fundraise right and what as per you are sort of the derailers yeah i would i would say first of all come in with, into the process as an entrepreneur with a fair bit of patience hmm. correct hmm. reason you are building a relationship with somebody mm. who's going to be a partner with you for a very long time mm. once they invest mm. Mm. right mm. it is not a small partnership right. it is not short term correct correct and it's a deep partnership it's a deep partnership yeah, yeah, yeah. there is capital involved yeah. but more importantly there's a relationship that will go on for <laughs> years together yes right not months yes. not a couple of years yes. but for years together that's the hope yes. because you build a successful company over 5 7 10 years and beyond right right correct? right 
so come in with patience to build a relationship hmm. to build a rapport hmm. to educate the founder on what you, uh, on the investor on what you are doing right and bring them on board to your vision right so come in with patience hmm. right tell a story hmm. right in the earlier stage also very important part of the story is a back story Ah. why are you building what you are building right right, right. very very important very yes. important very don't important. just arrive at it i found the great problem uh, and uh, i'm solving uh, this problem uh, you know uh, what it is right, right right give personal background right right what is your life story right right right, right? why have you become an entrepreneur right, right why are you you pick this problem to solve right. as an entrepreneur hmm. why are you best positioned to, to solve, solve this problem hmm. all of that back story mm. and how you have arrived at this mm. what research you have done mm. what motivates you to solve this problem right right what ground work you have done what have right. we learnt about the market right. what have we learnt about competition right and one thing leading to another right i think that back story is a critical, critical part of part. early right. discussions with vcs right right correct right. because it is a human connect yeah absolutely right? while there is idea why there is market while there is economics right, right right the human connect part of it and telling the story right and and, know, and, a, and, a, and a deep connect and a deep connect and a very deep, deep connect. connect so it's not a upar upar ki journey right it's not like a superficial kind of journey you have to really you know on from both the sides yes. the entrepreneur needs to come across as somebody who truly believes in his or her idea correct you guys have to come across correct. as somebody who kind of really understand the vision of Can the entrepreneur and say, "Yeah, we are willing to back you, right?" Right. And why will this entrepreneur stick through tough times? Right. Like we already right. discussed, it's exactly. about to happen. Yeah, it's about to happen. Everybody already happening. Hundred percent. Already right. happening. I will. They yeah. stick through tough right. times. Right. Right. Yeah, we are living through not yeah. so easy times. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, so, yes. what will this entrepreneur behave like? Hmm. Will they give up when things go tough? Right. Or will they fight it out? Right. Right. Do they have a great co-founding team? Right. Correct. Right. To have right. a great rapport between them. Right. Right. Correct. What right. is the equation? Hmm. How do the founders come together? Right. There are so many things on the human level right. that are super critical in the early stage for hmm. us to gauge. Hmm. Correct. Hmm. And to build comfort and hmm. conviction. Hmm. The idea, of course, matters. Hmm. Technology, of course, matters. Hmm. Market, of course, matters. Right. 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 And the yeah. economics all matters. Hmm. But who? is building it right. and why they are building it right. is in our view right. at the earlier stage uh, uh, particularly when there's no product no right. revenue no customers uh, 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 that becomes center piece uh, uh, right i would give it weight as as close to 50% uh, uh, right in the decision making process right we take fairly long to make these decisions uh, uh, we don't make decisions in 2 days or 2 weeks uh, uh, we take 2 months 3 months and is that the typical time frame typically 2 to 3 months i think definitely you know uh two to three months makes sense right correct again i would say it is not about the time frame it's mm-hmm. not about two to three months mm-hmm. let's say it is how many meetings how meetings. many discussions mm-hmm. so for me it is about if i have not met the founder five to ten times mm-hmm. and spent anywhere from one to two hours with them mm-hmm. each time each time and yeah. you translate that in 20 hours or right, more right, right, right. and then oh that happens over a period of time exactly yeah okay. so it'll, it'll take two to three so months. that is the way to mm-hmm. think about mm-hmm. it i would say five six seven meetings deep meetings uh, deep meetings mm-hmm. getting to know people mm-hmm. and then spending more time on product mm-hmm. more time on innovation mm-hmm. more time on market on the team etc on the right. team mm-hmm. and then of course the road map and the capital Mm-hmm. so the way i would look at it is multiple meetings mm-hmm. deep conversations mm-hmm. leading to the decision and and what what takes longer also in some sense yeah yeah there's been exceptions where decisions have happened quickly uh-huh. like a couple of weeks or something right. but usually that might happen maybe because there is a past correct know, uh, knowledge of the founder and yes. know something deeply it's yes 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 and and what as per you are the derailers typically to make it transactional mm mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. At least for us, कि अब पैसा दे दो यार हम बाकी हम देख लेंगे. Yeah, let's quickly decide. Uh-huh. You know, we have there's a there's a time uh-huh. time bound thing that I'm closing the round next week. Right. Can you say yes or no in two uh-huh. days? Uh-huh. That's no no. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, it might be your situation, but be transparent yeah. about it. Right. It's most important. Right. 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 You have a already. I I have seen by the way that people do that to generate that sense of. Uh, So it can work in some cases. Closure. It might work right? in some cases, but be transparent about it. Exactly. Do it saying that this is the reason I need to close it because huh. I have an offer on the table. Correct. And I would like to make a decision to be, you know, respectful for the other offer. Other side is right, right? which is fair. Huh. We we are in the same ecosystem. Right. Right. Nico so we understand that. that if I make an offer, huh. you would like confirmation exactly. sooner rather than yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. So we understand that. But that yeah. aside, don't make it just purely transactional. Mm. Don't talk too early about valuation and valuation. Ah. Huh. 
not in the first meeting ha uh, exactly don't say i want to raise x dollars for y ha uh, tell you right build a relationship understand find the middle ground right right let the other person let the investor be excited about the opportunity then find the best deal hmm hmm once which an investor for, is excited yeah which works for both the sides correct once uh. an investor is excited ha uh. and wants to work with you hmm investor is already incentivized to find the best deal right exactly right? exactly so yes investor wants so, to get hmm. more equity or hmm. certain equity right not only just more equity right but investor also balanced to figure out that the founder has to have certain equity right we right. not only valuation right right within ranges hmm and we are also fairly transparent in our expectations hmm and we will let you know those hmm. so don't talk numbers too soon hmm don't hmm. talk dollars too soon don't hmm. talk as long as you're in the range hmm. let's say if you want 5 million dollars i'm not going right to exactly person. exactly yeah. right right but within ranges that's fine yeah. don't jump to say you know i'm right. deciding are you in or out what do you want right. Right? so just just taking this point slightly ahead right? so then is it okay for me to if i'm putting together a pitch deck right is it okay for me to put that in my pitch deck as well that i'm looking obviously you'll say i'm looking to raise half a million should i also put in the valuation over there i would i would ref, i would suggest not not i would suggest okay not. okay right in my opinion valuation should be the last thing discussed hmm. after you've crossed all barriers hmm. right hmm. valuation should be the last thing discussed hmm. 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 if you are open to doing a deal hmm. right hmm. it is fair for you to ask the hmm. vc and the investor correct And you have certain conditions, conditions and conditions. yeah yeah correct get correct. to know that and yeah. if it is way out of your range right right then be so so boundary though. conditions could be that obviously one is the amount of money that you know uh, you know an investor can put in yes. the other one could be the kind of stakes that you know typically there is a mandate right i mean you go in and, and say we i will really open about uh, it in the exactly. very early meetings we right. have to talk exactly about that. Uh-huh. so get to know that hmm. and yeah I, i would say in the pitch deck particularly hmm. i'm only looking for what quantum of capital for what milestones for what, and for, for, for what executions and for execution is what is the entrepreneur looking for and Go that on. tells me okay this is a fit for me hmm. this is at least in my same range hmm. 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 okay so uh, i'll now ask you one most asked question <laughs> okay you know uh, and and i'm sure you also would have kind of you know heard about it right how much money should i raise and how much equity should i give away that is a you know it's it's, it's obviously you know it's a it's a founder's dilemma of course you know because a founder only has that the equity is something that a founder is playing with obviously Correct. the idea Correct. and ip and everything right but it's like it's a it's an equivalent of cash right at the early stages right so how much should a founder look to raise i mean I'm, let's not put it in terms of quantum yes but i think more in terms of you know what yeah. should be the number and yeah. how much should i dilute i think the framework or the way to think about it is what are you going to do with the capital mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. what is that plan mm-hmm. what are you going to execute mm-hmm. and what are you going to achieve mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right and with that we can say to build anything meaningful mm-hmm. and to make progress mm-hmm. and to get to the next milestone mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. which is good to either raise more capital or to be more sustainable to mm-hmm. be in a much healthier place mm-hmm. it, usually it takes some time mm-hmm. build something execute it take it to market mm-hmm. get customers get feedback scale up customers mm-hmm. find one channel of customer acquisition and gtm hmm. so on and so forth, right so i would say think about what you can do in 2 years 2 years time hmm. right hmm. sort of a median number hmm. longer is better hmm. but you can't obviously you can't find in predict also right? Right. but 2 years is seemingly right a right number 24 months hmm. because that's time to iterate yeah. you can make some mistakes you can still change track right. and do you know right. go through you know fix a few things right. Right. build a better product uh-huh. learn uh-huh. a few things get some feedback all of that right so say identify time range mm. identify milestones mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. product launch customer acquisition mm-hmm. revenue goals mm-hmm. in the certain time frame mm-hmm. and then back calculate mm-hmm. what do you need for all of this mm-hmm. two years engineering team mm-hmm. product team mm-hmm. itna sa chahega itna aayega right this is right? spend and all of then that then marketing team right. sales team right right correct what basic miscellaneous expenses correct, correct correct so on and so forth right right, right? and then plan that and think about a small scale up strategy hmm. usually we ask for something to say give me quarterly plans for the next eight quarters six okay. to eight quarters okay break it down in three three quarters okay. say what will you do in each quarter got it what product development will happen right what gtm will happen correct what team development will happen correct 
all of the above right and each of those has some resource requirements got it got it right mm. and then accordingly are you meeting some good milestones mm. and then that is the cap you can put a buffer of 20% mm. right mm. in case something goes wrong mm. or you need mm-hmm. to it takes longer to raise money the mm. next time so on and so forth mm. and if you're able to do that that is the quantum of capital Hmm. Of course, overarching to all of this is do that with frugality. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Keep it very tight. So limited resources. So you need Correct. to kind of you know Correct. act accordingly. Right. And and uh, how much typically uh, you know is the equity that I should kind of you know just offer, especially in the early stages, right? Yeah, I think it is because a tricky one. I'll, 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 tell you, I'll, I'll tell you where yeah. I'm coming from. I've seen number of entrepreneurs who kind of you know don't understand the process and they end up giving away a lot more. You yeah. are, you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been seen, there. seen We've been a there. lot of folks as well, right? Okay. So. No, I think uh, you know the ranges have to be thought through. With overall saying, you will raise a few rounds few of capital, rounds, yeah, and mm-hmm. therefore you will get diluted. Mm-hmm. I mean, through dilution, what scale and you know size right. of company are you building? Mm-hmm. That's a broader framework. Mm-hmm. Now, specifically at the early stage, mm-hmm. I think. depending on the complexity of the business hmm. and the domain and the sector hmm. right i would say the range of 10 to 20% is fairly median fairly okay that's the right? median number. for a lead investor right if you are putting in fair bit of capital and taking early risks right and leading a round right only less than 10% uh, does not give the risk reward ratio absolutely yeah correct yeah. so somewhere you know lead investors look for 10 to 15% to 15. ownership got it got okay? it and a lead investor can put anywhere between 10 to or sorry 50 to 75% of a round or of the capital of the round. got it got with it. that you can do the math and say for got the full it. round the 10 to 20% dilution got it is a fair dilution to expect fair as an entrepreneur got it there are exceptions to this yes of there course, are 25% plus also yes yes and, and there are less than, less than 10%, 10% right, also. right right those are situational those right. are case in points right. those are edge cases right i would say more than 80% of all deals done hmm. would have a median 10 15 20% dilution got it. and that if you can go in with right got it. the dilution becomes lesser if you are a hot entrepreneur ah. in a hot sector ah, ah. because you are more in demand yes. so more funds want to invest in you right. then they are competing you know got you it. can you can demand higher value got it got it got if it. there is lesser competition in supply and demand right right, right? right. Yeah. the price can yeah you know yeah, uh, yeah. the dilution can go up right but right. these ranges are fair i think most funds are comfortable comfortable only in these ranges okay very nice yaar excellent excellent i think like i said this is the most asked question i can imagine <laughs> you know <laughs> even for us you know i'm sure for you guys yeah, as well yeah, you know ki i'm putting in money i mean i'm raising money so how should i how much should i dilute and all great yaar very very uh, interesting now i'll ask another controversial <laughs> question <laughs> right it. like quote quote and quote uh, but funds only invest in iit iim types <laughs> okay <laughs> so so i'm putting you on the spot there but how true or untrue is this no i think uh, we cannot shy away from the fact that there is some truth to it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. historically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. correct mm-hmm. but one has to peel the layers of the onion to see what does that mean actually mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. is it really about the iit im mm-hmm. or is that some other reason behind it mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and the way to think about it i believe is the reason which is the signals, signals. that comes from yes entrepreneurs yes right like i said we are investing as much in people hmm. as much as in ideas and hmm. markets and opportunities right so the signals is proxy signals is something that on investors are looking hmm. for hmm. saying strong capability hmm. which could be technical capability hmm. which could be market capabilities hmm. team building capabilities hmm. sales capabilities so right. so right right correct so signals to say if a founder has a certain background hmm. and i would say it is less to do with iit i am hmm. it is more to do with what have they proven in their right earlier in their uh-huh. whatever they have done hmm. before hmm. okay the exceptions being when the founders are freshers hmm. they right out of college hmm. correct but then hmm. you cannot judge them on experience Absolutely. there's no experience Absolutely. when there is experience the point is where do they come from what skills do they bring to the table right right i would say equally important right so iit i am over period of years and the pedigree and how many entrepreneurs they have 
created hmm. and the success stories have there's a proxy of saying there's a certain quality there right, right. Certain, certain network there correct correct, correct. there's certain and learning like you mentioned there. somebody would know somebody who knows you and correct so there's a better chance that i have gotten a deal exactly. through the network exactly correct. yeah reach out is also there so right. there's a bias in built uh-huh. there but it is coming from these sources hmm. the other thing is to say hey you know for example recently i've seen more and more in addition to these Hmm. tags uh-huh. these signals uh-huh. is which company did you work at oh okay uh-huh. right uh-huh. if you're ex flipkart that's a signal ah uh-huh. ah uh-huh. because right. these companies are now matured into correct and these companies were highly entrepreneurial exactly yeah they built something phenomenal yeah 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 so talent bar is very high exactly yeah in these yeah. companies yeah. to yeah. get in correct so you got into uber yeah. ola right. flipkart right swiggy any other you can take right. 10 20 names right. and more right. say oh you work there but you particularly work there in the earlier stages right right that's a strong signal that you worked in an entrepreneurial environment yes yes and you solved complex problems complex problems yes and you have seen scale successfully successfully most yeah. important is successful yeah, yeah 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 right and you have seen scale uh, uh, uh. all of that has a higher chance of making you a better entrepreneur right right right, right. so there is always this thinking of where is watering hole of entrepreneurs right 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 Correct? right so i would say maybe historically became iit right right but right. i think it is becoming it is more broad exactly based, i think which is good yeah and and right. also i think look at it from this point of view right i mean you're as as the vc or the startup or the investment ecosystem right you will look for certain signals yes pehle i think that was the signal that you would kind Correct. of find because the, the the ecosystem wasn't mature Correct. and now the ecosystem is becoming mature yes. and you are like okay fine here has here's another signal that is coming through Correct. these people come from successful startups and they've solved these problems at scale and you know and i i think i and i hope and i think i think it will probably kind of you know the idim thing will yes. kind of you know no it's definitely happening right I, it's happening I, right I, i don't have data huh. but in our portfolio i don't think we have an overwhelming majority right. far from it right i if i to take a guess it's easily less than 50% oh, wow. right okay. it might be closer to 25% right 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 there are Uh, uh, right so uh, i'm definitely seeing a broad basing of where talent is coming from right where entrepreneurial talent is coming from right again right. because it's the maturing of the ecosystem there is right. more places where there is learning exactly, exactly. more places where there is learning right. where there is skill development right and more places where there are network building right right correct right, right. so i think that will that is great <laughs> and i think you are right we as we see it's our responsibility right. to be more open to you know entrepreneurs and founders coming from less known backgrounds right. but still give them the same attention right. same attention give them yeah. the same yeah. respect because right. you never know where a great idea is going to come from right honestly right. that is true right. and we have seen that consistently in our portfolio as well right right, right. right. there are no guarantees of iit i am becoming successful uh, absolutely. and there is every chance and more of people coming from non traditional or non you know right. high profile backgrounds right. still building great businesses right 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 right, right. so i think that era has sort of definitely waning right in terms of uh, investors being biased in that right. right some biases remain right but largely it's a positive development that it's going away right 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 fabulous yeah i think that's 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 really nice to hear also and i think like i like i mentioned i think it's it's also a process of the ecosystem maturing right yeah. you you obviously have more success stories which are yes. kind of coming through and great great super okay so uh, <clears throat> you know just just to kind of you know round out this this uh, portion around this entire fundraise thing right so uh, what's what's your view on the ongoing funding winter right and i think uh, you know we we've, we've been we we're old enough to kind of you know have seen this yeah. a little bit in the yeah. past as well right yeah. so uh, is it is it any different this time around and you know what's happening right on the entire uh, you know piece first disclaimer huh. not a macro expert right 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 <laughs> right hard to you know yeah. hard to predict anything right right correct yeah. uh, it is definitely unique hmm. in the way that we have not seen it now for more than a decade yes right? yes since yes since 2008 yes, was the yes, last yes. really tough phase right right around right. the lehman crash and everything correct. right that's when yeah. and uh, so it's been a while right right the important thing about and it's been a while people forget uh-huh. <laughs> and what happened what uh-huh. mistakes you made and then uh-huh. therefore you know forgetting is one of the big big things mm. uh the other thing is a lot of the younger mm. 
they have not seen it they have never seen it yeah. right everybody has come into you know the workforce and into the startup ecosystem for the last 15 years right right they've never seen they've only seen good times yes right yes. they've seen you know great uh-huh. growth Yeah. great fundraisers right, great right, valuation right. bumps right. great exits correct correct always fast growth so right. on and so forth right right okay? right and when that happens uh, you know you don't it's hard to react to the tough situation right. so i think we are seeing some of that some right of that right right, right right uh it is a tough situation hmm, hmm, hmm. but overall it's also a situation where the best companies will emerge hmm. right it is hmm. it will force frugality hmm. it will force uh pragmatism mm. it will force you to not only be think about hunky dory situations mm. it will force you to make harder decisions mm. in terms of scaling mm. in terms of team building mm-hmm. in terms of capital raising mm-hmm. correct like we spoke about the 24 month right you know that a time cycle, frame yeah, to yeah. to have your capital run that longer right. i'm hearing numbers of saying let it last 36 months wow okay because it might take it might be even harder to raise money so i mean what's happened i mean there there is money available in the market right yes, so there is. so just explain that that aspect uh, please i think you know there is money available in the market then what's the funding winter yeah uh, no that's a you know it seems like a dichotomy exactly yeah <laughs> uh, the detail might be hmm. and again this is subjective every fund operates right. differently and right. larger funds i'm not privy to how they operate mm-hmm. but one is you know funds have raised mm. large funds mm. the capital is available mm. but given the public markets having taken a turn mm. and sort of recession and interest rate having gone up mm-hmm. correct a fund can decide to deploy capital over a longer period of time right. as opposed to a smaller period of time. got it got so it. the same amount of money mm. can get deployed over four years instead of two years mm. Mm. which means every year there is less money mm. got it got it Correct. understood let's think out this take a uh, simple example and say 100 million dollars available uh, uh, in good times that uh, was being deployed in two years two years so every year 50 million dollars was being deployed right now the same vc right. can say hey this is i'll be more cautious i right. will not do 10 deals a year i will uh, do five deals a year right. and i will deploy over four years right right because the fund cycle is still eight years exactly so you have time you have time, have time. we are yeah. not yeah. nobody is in any hurry right right Correct? So and then wait and watch for, has increased and then you look for better deals you you negotiate a little bit more you'll say ki, you know you know what Correct? you know what so the bar is much higher right right correct you right. can deploy slower uh, uh. correct so capital available is lower right correct the other thing could be i will do lesser deals hmm. as but put more dollars in the ones that i really that, like that are working ha uh, ha uh, uh. correct right. so that is the other framework which a lot of funds can decide to do right okay instead of doing and this is not for us but this is for others right? let's say hmm. doing 50 deals hmm. my portfolio will be only 25 hmm but in the 25 i will put double the money double the money right right, right? right. so there were 50 companies historically exactly. that would have gotten money exactly now only 25 will get so 25 right. others will not get the money right or we'll have to find other sources of money right that right. is what translates in the ecosystem to say hey hmm. i would have if companies like these were getting funded 2 years uh, ago and uh, uh, what is not getting uh, funded right 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 correct the bar is high not to mention at every stage hmm. correct you know the expectation of revenue and milestones is higher hmm correct because we everybody's made the mistakes in the good years right. <laughs> or in the bubble years so to speak uh, correct uh, of companies being highly valued at lesser revenue right, right. and multiples were crazy now these companies are growing to this revenue right. into this multiples right correct into right. these valuations right so actually investors have more choice today right right there will be a company that is a little more mature hmm. that is asking for lesser money hmm. Hmm. so there could be a series a company uh, that is asking that you know has let's say hypothetically 1 million dollar in revenue hmm. Hmm. correct hmm. that is asking for 10 million dollars at a certain valuation hmm. correct hmm. but there could be somebody who is a sort of a series b with 3 hmm. million dollars huh. asking for the same dollars same same ha 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 investor has the choice of giving 1 million dollar arr company right. versus of 3 million dollar arr right company. right the choice has increased right right, right right so all sorts of forces are at work right money is available right but it's being deployed more cautiously more cautiously slower got it and got it. the good ones will probably get more which means number of deals done could be lesser they go down yeah quantum per deal may go up god these it. are my observations right. but i think things are changing it you know 
very very on a fast pace right, right. so you to take stock of things over right. every and and, and as and what's your view i mean how how long is this phase going to last i mean do you think there's going to be a turn around probably next year sometime or something like that no again like i said the macro is super tough to say there is you know, some guidance to say right. hopefully next year is a better year better year right. right again if we look at the same framework of funds have to deploy over 3 mm. to 4 years mm. if they slow down this year mm. even next year they still have to deploy exactly Correct. exactly so maybe there's a better time coming <laughs> but what one has to keep in mind is it's unlikely we will see what we saw in it's not going to be that uh, of 2019 yeah. 2021 right, right, so right, right. that realization is very important for everybody everybody right yeah. because if we keep expecting the peak mm. to come back mm. we might be disappointed mm. Mm. correct mm. i think there will be some normalized version right of you know positivity that will come in right, right as opposed to the peak bullishness correct correct right? correct and maybe hopefully get past the bearish and that phase was an o- 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 overheated uh, it was definitely no market at that phase. point in time right, right. there's enough yes. data going around right. in terms of how many deals were done in 2020 and 21 right right, right. after the pandemic exactly how much capital came into right. the system and right. it was distributed thick mm. and fast right right correct. right and we are seeing the outcomes of a lot of those not all right. of those right. not being I get right, right, right. Correct. U.S. public markets trickling into late stage right. valuation, leading to mid stage valuation, yeah, which always yeah. comes into right. early stage. Right, 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 right. We are hopeful that next year is a better year, better year, but not crazy year. I think right. the recovery will be slow, hmm. but hmm. it hopefully some normalcy will return over the next couple of and years. And also, but there is high caution. Right and now. and also it 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 also impacts your own fundraising. Absolutely right. I mean, Absolutely. you go to LPs and you kind of say, "Ki, no you know, we are looking to raise our, let's say, a thousand thousand crore round." They're like, "Ki, I think it's too risky yeah. a market for us at this point." And that is part of the reason I said why slower deployment right. is what VCs do mm. is to say, "Hey, I don't want to go back fundraising again to my LPs." Correct. So because this is not the right LPs. Yeah, yeah, LPs will not right. be ready. Right. May not be ready, and yeah. therefore. you know if i have to go back one year later mm. let me make this fund last one year longer mm. correct mm. it is connected right as to right. why i am deploying exactly. exactly because my lps are you know giving me that signal right to say hey maybe uh. this is not the time to raise an new fund yeah. right yeah. i already gave you money two years ago exactly please use yeah. please, please use, use of that <laughs> <laughs> all right so in some sense it is a trickle effect yeah correct? yeah yeah and uh, i you know you know we don't know what the mac- macro holds hmm. but i believe this year is continuing will continue to be tough got it correct hopefully next year we will come out of the trough and, and maybe some momentum and uh, but but at the at the end of the day i think uh, deals are still happening guys you know no it's, it's not that deals are not happening and it's not that you know you are uh, you know that their valuations are going to be like extremely low or anything of that sort for the right deal the right uh, you know uh, mix of a uh, investor and and an idea i think the deals are happening 100% right? 100% this There's, is also from yeah. a vc perspective it is a buyers market right, right so we are excited about great opportunities right 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 uh, we are cautious but mm. we are excited about great opportunities great entrepreneurs mm. building great companies mm. it's as simple as that mm. Mm. correct mm. valuations should not be benchmarked with 2021 yeah, or yeah. 2020 numbers correct correct but you go back to 2018 numbers right right some corrections be pragmatic right, right? capital right. to get to the next milestone from right. entrepreneur perspective right and do those and move forward right right, right. and then when times turn right and when the tide turns you should be surviving first right yeah. first, first, principle, first first principle is to survive first principle so get past this <laughs> somehow we get to the other side <laughs> right right so, the storm yes if you get to the other side yes. of the storm you yes. can grow you can build you can scale right Correct? right so right. don't die during the storm yeah it should be the soul mantra right all right, right. And for that capital is available hmm. you know build relationship right. talk to the right investors talk to the right people and take right. money at the right price should and also fine. i think i think one thing is important that entrepreneurs need to realize is that if if your business is doing well and if the entrepreneur sees value and like you just said uh, uh, you know some time back people are pumping money into the ideas which are doing well yeah right yeah. so look at it from this point of view i mean in terms of you know the kind of opportunity that you have right now instead absolutely. of looking on the, the vc is looking outside they're looking at their portfolio absolutely right? i would put money in my best company more money in my best company as opposed to trying to save a company that is struggling exactly it's exactly. a tough decision to make right, right right to any of your portfolio companies to not have not be in a position to back them further right right, right. but as a fund manager uh-huh. as putting dollars 
and right. money into play right. for good outcomes right. for our LPs. Right. Right. It is the better decision. Right. If one of our companies is doing exceptionally well, hmm. you back them more. Right. You're probably going to give them two dollars instead of one dollar. Right. And unfortunately, that one dollar extra will come from somebody who's not doing so well. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So exactly. the best companies have actually in this phase. You are right. Right. Have the opportunity to take advantage. Right. 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 And consolidate. Right. Exactly. Because it's also a time in the market when if you have that extra dollar right. you can beat your competition absolutely competition is also struggling for exactly. capital right. and to power through right so with that extra dollar you can go even further ahead you can kill competition or you can take two steps ahead of the competition right the other thing that all of this has impacted hmm. is of course you know the sad part is there have been large layoffs etc hmm. hmm. the layoffs have a great downstream effect hmm. for early stage entrepreneur hmm. is talent availability at affordable prices ah, ah, because ah. employees exactly. who were expecting like crazy salaries 3x job for Correct. whatever were happening and my favorite example bmw bikes <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so those are not happening right and yeah. there are more talented people available in the market yeah. and mm. you can get them at affordable prices, affordable prices. to join your company your Correct. mission your vision Correct. Correct. And, and also i think the, and, and also i think the uh, availability of talent like you know from a, who's who are working remotely Yes, I think it's Absolutely. incredible. I mean, I'm seeing Absolutely. so many startups who the just hybrid model, hybrid model, remote model. Exactly, yeah. That's working. you save up on your costs, right? You don't have to be in the same city. You can travel as and when required. And people together. are not having offices today. Exactly, yeah, possible. yeah. Of yeah. course, there's merit to people working together. Right. But the hybrid is really catching on. Right. People work two days a week together. Right. Uh, huddle up one one right. week a month. Right. Right. And the rest of the time they're working remotely. Yes. So yes, you can hire from anywhere. Yes. I was having a conversation with somebody. And saying they are very successful in hiring from tier two towns, hmm. Indore, hmm. Surat, hmm. Chandigarh, Lovely. and some yeah. places, yeah. small towns, low cost of living, correct, correct, great correct. talent available. Right. Just imagine what that does for how much is your runway? Yeah, that Which, just extends right, it. Like, huh? right, that exactly. extends. That's the point. In hmm. these times, you can use all of these things. Right. And instead of twenty four months, if you have thirty six months of runway, right, you are in a great position. Right. For any such exactly. improved metric. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I think there are many, many benefits. Right. Right. Mm. No question. There, it is. Uh, it is a tough phase, mm. but it's not a phase where it's all doom and gloom. Mm. Correct. Mm. I think good entrepreneurs survival instinct mm. and uh, continue to be yeah. frugal and pragmatic. And and people who people who are able to successfully navigate this phase, I think know, they'll be gold. They'll be gold. They'll right? definitely be gold. The greener pastures yeah. on the other side. Absolutely. They'll be there yeah. when the capital comes down, flooding into the market, or right. at least fairly more momentum. Right. right. They will be in a much better position. Much better to position. command, you right. know, premiums in whatever form or shape. Right. Correct. Right. Right. No, no. I think super. 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 We are, I think this has been like wonderful. Yeah. This has been like a like a master class. Any any closing comments that you have, anything that you might want to share with entrepreneurs. and again you know bringing in your own perspective uh, your own experience no i think uh, the headline is you know keep building mm, yeah. <laughs> right there is from an entrepreneur perspective if you are passionate and if you are deeply committed mm. and invested into mm. a problem statement and a solution right then it's not about a recession or one or two years right it is any way about a decade uh, uh, right uh. it is about building something meaningful mm. right so draw inspiration from all the successes right from people who have stuck it through right and who have played the long game right think about that mm. the good and bad times will keep you know yo yo in some yes. sense yes yes right entrepreneurs perspective be prepared mm. be focused mm. right keep your cost low right correct both on the personal side as well as on the professional, on the professional side, side that right. gives you more options right right and then seek out the best ecosystem partners hmm. right hmm. on the deep tech side especially uh. <laughs> right. uh. and others as well right. right but seek them out build relationship right right just build i hmm. think we are in for amazing 10 15 20 years right right the entrepreneurial energy it's amazing in this it's city in this country yes. overall yes i think the time is right, right? Yes. there's no question yes right good and bad times will come right so that's my only headline view right. we are committed to this ecosystem for the right. long haul right. Right. right right we will right. keep raising money funds and keep deploying right right correct right. great entrepreneurs and great ideas right right to whether it is space the moon mars or anything <laughs> on the ground lots of things to <laughs> right. do right 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 and of problems to solve absolutely right i think it's amazing to see young entrepreneurs 
not just young but all types yeah, of yeah yeah so i think we draw energy from them exactly i was about to say that i think that whole energy of kind of you know entrepreneurial uh, you know mindset kind right of. it is so infectious right i mean and, and honestly you're right it's not nothing to do with age anymore Correct. you know you have you have entrepreneurs who are like uh, you know who are young who are old single right. founders co-founders yeah. multiple uh, you know uh, segments right Correct. everybody is kind of you know hustling and coming together and trying to build something no, from even scratch even our right. fund right? right our fund we are the, of course the two partners we are the oldest people in the <laughs> fund right and <laughs> the, you know uh, the rest of the average age is 25 less wow. than 30 and wow. they just for us to keep pace with them exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> that, <laughs> but they give us energy right right they keep telling us about new <clears throat> new ideas right right look at what we have discussed or what has happened in ai and exactly chatting. exactly so exactly. breakthroughs will happen right. ideas will come right let's just keep building super super thank you so much for your time it's been it's been an absolute pleasure and i am loving my my trip to bangalore i think you know it's it's, no, it's just awesome been awesome that you're here yeah thanks yeah. for coming and thanks yeah. for the opportunity Thank you thank you so much thank you everyone and like always don't forget to like share and subscribe i'll see you again very soon with another exciting video thank you so much bye guys thank you